there are many ways we can extend table views in Rhapsody. In this video, we'll cover the use of embedded Java. This is an incredibly powerful capability with two key benefits. First, it can display model data in the table that you wouldn't otherwise be able to display. The user interface, for example, only allows me to select properties of the model element in that row. With Java, I can go beyond that. I can traverse the model from that element and display data from other areas of the model. Secondly, I can edit data. In the very first video in this series, I mentioned that for the most part, cell data isn't editable in table views. This is where we can change that. Here we have a simple table layout for use cases, showing their name and description. I have a table view open using that layout. And if I try to edit the description in the table, then I can't. That cell isn't editable. Let's change the table layout. Let's change that second column. Instead of a general attribute, I'll choose user defined method. Now note that the column name changes, but we can change that to something more sensible later. In the property field, there are two options. Set plugin method allows us to call a Java method defined in an external library. We'll cover that in another video. I'll choose the other option, edit implementation. This dialog allows me to add Java code directly into the table. And there are three methods. The getter is the method Rhapsody will use to display data in the column in the cell. The picker allows me to supply the user of the table with a list of model elements to select from. And the setter defines what Rhapsody should do to the model when that selection is made. Let's start with the getter. Now I can return a string, a model element, or a list of model elements. Let's stick with string. Here we can see the signature of the Java code Rhapsody will call to try and display information. One of the arguments it passes is the cell element, that is the model element for the row. Let's write a simple getter that returns the description of that cell element. Now, knowledge of the Rhapsody API is obviously required here, but I do have a free online course which covers that. Also, this dialog is basic to say the least. I highly recommend writing these Java snippets in Eclipse, where you have syntax highlighting, autocomplete, and you can test the Java code before copying it into this dialog. However, what I'll do today is simple enough that I'll work directly here. So that's our getter. When I click apply, Rhapsody checks that Java code for errors. And if there are any, they will appear in the output window. So pay attention there. Let's refresh the table. So far, nothing has changed other than the column header. We still see the existing description, but now it's being retrieved by our Java code. So let's edit that Java again. And this time we'll select the setter tab. Again, we can see the signature. We have the cell element, but also the old string value and any new string value that our user enters. Let's supply a simple setter that sets the description of the cell element to that new value. Now we have to return a Boolean, but to my knowledge, Rhapsody does absolutely nothing with it. I'll click apply and check for errors, and then I'll go and refresh the table. Now, although nothing has changed visually, we should now find that the column for that description is editable. And you can make any string property editable, such as the name, using the exact same technique. Let's do one more thing. Let's add another column. And again, I'll select user defined method and then edit implementation. This time, I'll change the getter to return a model element. Now notice how the signature has now changed. Instead of returning a string, we have to return an IRP model element. Let's write a simple one that returns the owner of the cell element. Again, I'll apply that, check for errors, and then I'll refresh the table. There we can see the owners of the use cases. 
Now let's edit that Java again and we'll select the setter. We still have the old and the new value arguments, but those are IRP model elements instead of strings. We also have an additional argument, which is a Boolean indicating whether the option to create new was selected. I'll add a simple statement here to set the owner of the cell element to the new value and then add a return statement. Now, if I apply that, Rhapsody warns me that although I've defined what to do when the user selects something in the table, I haven't actually yet provided any mechanism for them to perform the selection. So let's provide that. Now, I could provide a custom picker to supply a list of model elements, but then I can also use Rhapsody's own select or new options. If you use the predefined selector, then your setter code should check whether it's a valid selection. When your user selects something, is it valid? If you provide your own picker, then you can make sure that only valid elements are in fact selectable. If you enable the new option, then that just allows the user to select new in the table, in the picker. Your setter code still needs to actually do something. It needs to create the new model element. Now, for simplicity today, I'll just use the predefined selector. I'll refresh the table. And now we should find that I can move a use case around in the model just simply by clicking in the cell and selecting a different package. Using Java in Rhapsody tables is an incredibly powerful capability. If you download the RAML safety analysis profile from jazz.net, you'll see how an entire model can be built using nothing but table views. That's all for now. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series to learn more about table views. And as always, look out for more Rhapsody features you may have missed.